Good morning, everyone. Our lesson today is in 2 Thessalonians, and uh, we're continuing our study about the Thessalonica church. And uh, today was a very interesting story, uh, interesting, um, not story, but um, scripture um, about the second coming and about things that are going to happen. And uh, uh, it begins in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to come together. We thank you for answered prayer, Lord. And we pray that you will continue to work in our lives and, and show your power and show your, your how your mighty hand can work. And Lord, we just thank you for that. We thank you for those that are graduating and, and ask a special blessing on them as they start new lives and new jobs. And and uh, Lord, we just pray for those that are sick, those that are lonely, those that are, Lord, just in desperate situations. Lord, we pray for those that are having financial problems. And Lord, we pray for those that are lost especially, that they can come to know you. Lord, we pray for our pastor this morning as he stands before us. And Lord, we just pray that you would give him the words to speak and that you would open our hearts and minds that we can listen and, and learn from it. Lord, I just um, thank you for all the blessings in our lives. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for what you've done for us, the plan of salvation. And Lord, we just pray that we can be the Christian that you would have us to be. And Lord, I just thank you for your blessings. And we just ask all this in Jesus' name. And we thank you most of all for Jesus. Amen. Our lesson today, like I said, is in uh, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. And let's read the first two verses. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be easily upset or troubled, either by a prophecy or by a message or by a letter supposedly from us, alleging that the day of the Lord has come. When uh, Paul is speaking here about the day of the Lord, he is talking about when Jesus comes back and for the second coming. And the church of Thessalonica was upset because false teachers were coming into the church and trying to um, teach them false doctrine. And they even had gone so far as to tell them that the day of the Lord had already happened and that uh, they were left here and and uh, that's why they were going through the trials and persecutions that they were going through. And uh, Paul had previously taught them that when Jesus comes back, that it would be with the, you know, angelic uh, shout and uh, the blast of a heavenly trumpet. And it also teaches us, remember, everyone will see this happen. Uh, it will be impossible to miss. When this happens, believers will be gathered to him at that time. But remember, every eye shall see him. And uh, so... It's not going to happen, and we're going to miss it. Everybody's going to know when it happens. So apparently, um, these false teachers were coming in and kind of twisting the truth and representing themselves as someone um, from Paul, uh, someone who was coming in his name. Uh, allegedly, it said, you know, producing a letter uh, from him. But in reality, they were just false teachers, uh, trying to take them down a wrong road. And as a result of this, the believers were getting confused and afraid. The false prophets may have even, uh, like I said, composed a fraudulent letter uh, stating that it was from Paul. And so he was trying to address all these things. And Paul clearly identifies them and their message as false. Uh, he, he, it kind of implied, you know, they're, from the way they were upset, like I said, that the Lord had already returned. But if you read the scripture, it says, every eye shall see him. So he's not going to come back and we're not going to know it. Uh, we're we're going to know when it happens. Okay, uh, let's look at verses three through five. Don't let anyone deceive you in my way. For that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man 
doomed to destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he sits in God's temple proclaiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that when I was still with you, I used to tell you about this. Um, he says, don't let anyone deceive you. Uh, if you haven't seen Jesus with your own eyes, he has not returned. Uh, Paul mentioned the man of lawlessness. Uh, this man is doomed to destruction. Uh, lawlessness relates to being against God, against uh, everything that is moral, everything that is good. Uh, scholars uh, equate this man to the Antichrist, uh, the rebel's Messiah, as they call it. Uh, he will be marked by arrogance. He opposes every religious ritual. Uh, he exalts himself above all. He will not be Satan, but he will be Satan's tool, and Satan and his demons will be behind him, giving him the power that he has. Uh, he will promote himself as God. It says he will even set himself up as the temple and tell people that he's God. And uh, he will try, you know, to replace God. He will try to set himself up and uh, for people to worship him. He will demand their worship. Let's look on at verses 6 through 8. And you know what currently restrains him so that he will be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but the one now restraining will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The Lord Jesus will destroy him with the breath of his mouth and will bring him to nothing at the appearance of his coming. What restrains the Antichrist from coming now is God. And uh, this evil individual who will come to the forefront during the Great Tribulation uh, is still under the power uh, and under the, the uh, restraining power of God. And uh, oh, I'm going to try to get this glare. I just realized I'm giving you a glare again. Hold on, just... I'm sorry to say, maybe I can move around a little bit and it won't be so much of a glare. The sun's coming in on my, on my glasses. I'm sorry. Try to block it out some anyway. Um, Satan and his followers are powerful. We know that. And uh, when the Antichrist comes, he will, he will feed off of them. He will gain his power from them. And, uh, but evil can never overcome the power of God, the power of good. Uh, at some point, this man of lawlessness or the Antichrist will be revealed. And in scripture, in my commentary, it told me that um, he will be revealed about three and a half years into the tribulation. And then he'll still have, you know, 42 months to uh, do his nasty work and uh, do what uh, terrible things he decides to do. So um, just as Jesus, just as Christ came and he followed God's plan, no matter how terrible this may seem, it is in God's plan. And uh, we have to trust him that he is doing what it takes to rid the world of evil and, and Satan and his followers. He will allow at that point in the in during the tribulation, God will allow the Antichrist to come and to be revealed and uh, to accomplish God's holy plan of, of ridding us of the evil that's in the world. Uh, humanity has chosen to rebel against God and his ways, and all of this is leading up to the days uh, of the Antichrist appearance. Just as all this evil is at work to try to hinder God's plan, the Holy Spirit is still at work to save souls. The Holy Spirit is still working to save the lost. This will continue for a time. And it says the Holy Spirit working and seeking, uh, convicting and saving the lost will continue for a time. Then the Spirit will move out of the way some believe that this will happen when Christ returns. 
and uh, simultaneously with the rapture of the church, when he takes out the believers out of this world, then uh, he's going to pull back his Holy Spirit and allow the Antichrist uh, to appear, uh, allow this great time of tribulation. I have always been told that people can be saved during tribu tribulation, but it will be very hard uh, to be saved during that time. When this happens, um, um, they, the scripture uh, teaches that tribulation uh, will last seven years. So halfway into the tribulation, the Antichrist will be revealed. Uh, God will remove his divine restraint and Satan will finally be allowed to fulfill his desire to imitate God. Uh, and he'll be indwelling in a man who will uh, perform Satan's will as uh, Jesus fulfilled God's will. Then this guy's going to be Satan's tool to do the things that Satan wants done. God's plan for the destruction of evil and judgment of a wicked world and Satan and his followers will happen. Uh, it will occur. Death will occur at God's hand. And the Antichrist, his partners, the false prophet, will be cast into the lake of fire, alive, it says, which burns with brimstone, where I will be eternally separated from God. And that is our truest, our truest, most horrible thing, is to be separated from God. Because if you're separated from God, you're separated from all the goodness of God. And what does that leave? That just leaves the evil and the, the horrible and the, the things that we want no part of. Okay, let's look on it 9 through 12. The coming of the lawless one is based on Satan's working. With every kind of miracle, both signs and wonders serving the lie, and with every wicked deception among those who are perishing. They perish because they did not accept the love of the truth and to be saved. For this reason, God sends them a strong delusion so that they will believe the lie, so that all will be condemned. Those who did not believe the truth but delighted in unrighteousness. During this time when the Antichrist is active, uh, he will carry out wicked schemes to deceive people and lead them astray. He will have a wide variety of supernatural uh, powers. He, he will demonstrate them. He will be able to perform every kind of miracle, it says, uh, every, all these signs and wonders, uh, so that even the very elite, it said, could be fooled by him. That's why it's so important that we know the scripture and that we know these things that we're going to see Jesus when he comes back. If we're saved, we're going home with him. Then the tribulation will start. And the halfway through, the Antichrist is going to uh, be revealed and be very active through this time. And uh, it will be a, a time more horrible than our world has ever seen. And uh, so we don't want to be here for that. But it says he will be able to have these powers and to prove to the world that he really is a God. And uh, he will be counterfeit and his ways will be deceptive. Christ used miracles, signs and wonders to point people to God. This man will use signs and wonders to point to himself, to gain uh, power and to gain people to follow him. Uh, to draw people away from the Lord and reject the true faith. He will do all he can to fool people. This is Satan's last-ditch effort to try to be God. That's what he's always wanted. He's always been jealous of God, and he's wanted to be who God is. And he, he never will be because he doesn't have that capability. He doesn't have the credentials to be the Lord. And uh, so he wants people to worship him. And he will actively target the lost and the unbelievers. He wants to take as many people to hell with him as he can. Uh, it is important that we know the truth and that we can pass that truth along down to others so they will know when these things start to happen. Uh, when it comes to beware and to hold tight to your faith and your scriptures. Um, because there will be people 
who will have heard the truth, who have not been saved, but they've heard the truth. They've heard preaching. They've heard um, teaching. They've uh, It's been shared with them. So when these things start to happen, it could reveal to them the truth if they remember the things that they've been told. So it is important that we share these things, that they may have a chance, even in this terrible time, to accept the Lord. The truth is found in the gospel. Um, these are the words of truth that we can hang on to. Jesus is the only way to uh, have a true relationship with God. When the deceiver whispers his lies, we can reply. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And that's in John 14, 6. When it says in the in verses 11 and 12 that God will send a strong delusion so that they will believe the lie, uh, it doesn't mean that God does tricks them in some way. He just allows them to believe what they want to believe. He doesn't uh, convict them. Uh, he just allows them to go their own way. And, and they're deluded by the own, their own minds, uh, the things that they think in their own mind. Uh, it just means God will allow them to go, like I said, to go their own way. And uh, they've refused God's offer of salvation. They've had a chance to believe. Uh, they've had a chance to accept Christ, but instead they have delighted in un unrighteousness and chosen to reject Jesus. When you read about the Antichrist, it sounds like a horrible science fiction movie, but we know that it's not that at all. Uh, it is the truth of God yet to be revealed and yet to be accomplished as and, and as believers uh, we need to be knowledgeable. We need to share the truth with others. And we need to always acknowledge that God is supreme. He is in charge. He is all-powerful. And nothing can happen without his, his, his approval. Nothing, the Antichrist couldn't come back at all if God didn't restrain his hand and allow him to. He's keeping him from coming right now. And uh, so... We have to believe that. And if the Lord, you know, removes that restraint, then he could already be here. Who knows? But when I don't think so, because uh, me, myself, I, I'm, I'm leaning toward the day of the Lord when we'll be raptured and then tribulation starts. And I know some people don't believe like I do, but that's just what I personally believe. And uh, there are different beliefs on when when the church will exit, and uh, my that's just what I choose to believe. Um, then, um, you know, even Satan and his demons have to obey him, obey the Holy Father. Uh, he, you know, they, they don't have free reign. He, he keeps them in line. And uh, so our Lord is mighty. He is righteous. He is holy. He loves us. He does everything for us. He sent his only son to die for us. He is going to come back for us. He, After everything he's went through, he is not going to leave us here. We are his prize. He is what he, we are what he died for. Uh, the reason he, and he will come back to accomplish that plan. And uh, we just want to be ready. We just want to be uh, willing. And we want to be... Um, doing the best we can while we're here to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson today, and I hope you have a good day and a great day. And please, if you don't, if, if you're not listening to our pastor's sermons, uh, please take the time to do that because he has really been, uh, he's always uh, delivered great messages, but I'm telling you, he, in the last few weeks, especially, I feel like he has delivered some very powerful messages so take the time and listen to what uh, he has from the Lord for us. And uh, until next time, much love.